will record on the computer. We'll try. It. Okay. All right. So let me squeeze this up a little bit here. All right. So I may have to. I'm going to go ahead and shrink you guys. Um, so we can't see you guys um, on Zoom. So if you need something, please just unmute yourself and um, let us just holler at us or raise your hand. I think we might be able to see a, the raising of the hand. So, okay, so we are starting whoa, um, today talking about giving you guys a resource guide. Um, the first thing I want to do is to thank Debbie. Um, Debbie was our intern throughout the summer and the fall. And then she stayed on and we were able to hire her as an assistant for this semester. Um, we came up with this idea at one of our um, leadership meetings that we wanted to be able to share more resources with you guys. Um, oh, thank you. Um, and so Bridget and I gave Debbie the task of, here's what we want you to address. And she just crushed it. Um, so this is by no means an all-inclusive resource guide. What we did was take the resources that Bridget and I and a few of our other staff and, and colleagues use a lot. Um, and then these are also some of the most user-friendly resources as well. Um, we also want this to be a time that you guys share resources back with everybody here too. So as we go through, if there's something that you found um, that's similar or better or different, um, please feel free to interject. All right. So if you guys go to your resource guide, and those of you at home, um, I will send out the link um, to the recording and then also a PDF of the actual guide. It's much more in depth than what I'm going to show on the screen. Um, these are the, the sites that we'll be referencing today. And we wanted to give you a little bit of terminology um, because in this day of technology, it feels like there's a new word popping up every day to try to make some form of information sound even better than it is. So, um, pod, well, do you want to do this part? Sure. You share that. <laughs> um, so, again, this um, page is thanks to Debbie putting this together. Um, so yeah, this these terms get thrown around a lot, like Michelle said, especially when we're utilizing online platforms for resources. And this is something that really, you know, COVID forced these organizations to grow their online programming, um, which is, you know, a nice thing um, now that we have this, you know, plethora of online resources. So I guess one small positive thing to come out of um, COVID. So a podcast, um, I know the Parkinson's Foundation has podcasts, um, as well as some of the other organizations we'll talk about, but that is a pre-recorded digital audio file um, that's made available on the internet, um, and you can listen to that anytime and anywhere. Um, probably the most common way people listen to podcasts is on their phone. Um, if you have an iPhone, there's already, you know, a podcast app, but there's different platforms where you can listen to podcasts. Um, and then a webinar, um, this is an online seminar that's hosted. Usually it's hosted live, so you can tune in and view it, you know, as the presenter is giving the information live. Um, so that way you're able to interact with other participants and ask questions of the presenter. Um, this is something we send out a lot of information about different webinars um, through the Parkinson's Foundation or Davis Finney. Um, so there's a lot of webinars out there and that's, you know, mainly just sharing information on a particular topic related to Parkinson's in this case. Um, a webcast um, is similar. Um, usually that's something that's pre-recorded and you can watch at a later time. Um, so similar to the webinar, just there's usually not that interaction with the other participants or the ability to ask questions of the host. Um, you can still ask questions a lot of times. It's just more of a, you know, you send the question and they'll get back to you later um, type of format. Zoom is something, you know, a lot of us have become very familiar with um, in the last few years. It's an online conferencing platform. We're using it right now. Um, so it is you know, what we utilize to connect with people in other areas. So we do this for almost all of our programming. 
we have our exercise classes available by Zoom. We have you know our education meeting like we're doing right now, as well as um, different groups that we offer. So um, Zoom is what makes that possible for us to log in from home if we're not able to make it to the in-person meetings. Um, audiobooks, online recordings of a book reading. Um, so this is something nice, you know, if um, you're not able to sit down and read, you know, a hard copy of a book or even on, you know, a device like a Kindle. Um, a lot of people will use audiobooks, you know, if you're going out for a walk and want to listen to something or in the car, um, people use them too. Um, so a good way to get information without having to sit down and read the book. Um, a blog, um, most of the platforms that we'll talk to talk about today, or excuse me, most of the foundations and organizations um, have blogs associated with them. Um, it's a website or web page that's updated frequently with different um, stories and opinions. It's more of a um, informal conversation style of writing, um, similar to an editorial. All right. All right, so we're going to move on to the Parkinson's Foundation. Um, this is probably the one that I'm the, the most near and dear to my heart, um, and that's because they have a chapter in this area. It's actually in Kansas City. It's the Heartland chapter, um, and so it, it helps to keep it a little bit more close to home. You feel like you have a more direct connection to them. Um, I am a Parkinson's Foundation ambassador, and so that also helps me feel a little more connected and feel like I can bring more resources to all of you a little bit easier as well. Um, so we'll go on down and I'll show you some of the key things that we have through this organization. So what I'll do is kind of talk about the different um, things that you can find and then we'll go into the site and let you actually see how we navigate that a little bit. Um, so they have a tab for understanding Parkinson's. Um, it's going to talk about what are your symptoms, how do you come up with a diagnos diagnosis, and what are your treatment options, right? Those are the nuts and bolts of what we want to know when we go to a site, typically. Um, all of the things in this section are also available in Spanish. Um, the next se section is on living with Parkinson's, and the main goal for this is helping you to improve your quality of life. It's all about functional living and living the best that you can with the disease. Then resources and support. Um, we'll go into this because they have a lot of different educational information. Um, and then, of course, the research is going to look at how they are working to try to, tr to treat and to cure Parkinson's. And then also giving you ways of how you can become involved in their research. And of course, Everybody has that philanthropy component. Everybody wants you to help them too. So that will be on each of the sites as well. Um, and then also the, the how you can help is very similar to the um, advancing research and, and talking about how you can get involved. Okay, so let's go back then and we'll go to the actual site. Okay, give me a little X, there you go. All right, so this is the actual site here. Um, and as you go into it, you just go to your understanding Parkinson's and then you can pick any of these topics that you would like to do. So, for example, if we wanted to go into what are the causes of Parkinson's, we would just click this and then we're going to be able to scroll down and find environmental component. Um, it's got this whole concept of looking at lifestyle, genes and environment together. Um, and then you can also, anytime it's highlighted in blue um, and underlined, you can go into that. The one thing I want to point out to you all here is that one of the big things that the Parkinson's Foundation is doing for their research is called PD generation. Um, so if you go into that, it's going to give you the information looked at. Um, it is a free study. So they will send you, you enroll here and they will send you a kit. Um, I believe it's just the signing, then you send it in and they will test the genetics um, to see if you have any of the genes that they know of at this point are linked to Parkinson's. They will then keep your information um, only within, you know, in research stuff, they're not gonna sell your genes to anybody. So we won't have little clones of you out there. Um, 
but they'll use that then in future studies as they start to learn more and more about other genes to see if they can make connections. Um, so this is a really huge study that they're doing. Um, I, I encourage you, if you have any desire to be in a study, to think about one of the ones like this, because you can do it at home and it helps everybody um, to, for the future to look at this. Um, I do want to ask um, our resident expert here, um, Virginia, do you have anything you want to add about the, the PD generation or research in general? Um, hold on one second, Virginia. Abby, could you grab that mic for her, please? I have not done this particular study. Um, I have done one of the larger studies. Um, pretty close. Is it blue? There you go. Okay. So as I said, I've not done this particular study. I've done one of the larger studies. And I've done one of the See if you can um, determine earlier who has Parkinson's from vocal characteristics. If you want to do a study, it's not that hard to get signed up for ones like this that you do at your home. And I think it's worth it just to know that you've given back a little bit. Awesome. Thank you, Virginia. I don't know why that little guy is not working very well. So I'm sorry. We may just have to switch. You want to give it a, just a quick test too? Okay. Blue. Yeah, I don't know. We'll just stick with this one. So thank you, Virginia. Um, has anyone else done this study, the PDG narration? If you want more information about this um, or want to have this, want to apply for this and need some help in getting registered for that, we can help you with that. We just need to set up a time and get you registered, but we'd be happy to help you. Michelle. Right. Yes, Mike. I have had I'm I have had that test. Yes. You want to tell us about how it worked? Uh, it's basically like you said, it was just simply a swab, send it in, and uh, they'll get back with you as far as the gene information. Very good. Thank you, Mike. It, it was no big problem to do. Wonderful. Is it, is it only for if you've had an official Parkinson's diagnosis or like mine is Parkinsonism at this point? That I can't answer. My doctor, uh, Dr. Lyon at KU Med Center is the one that suggested that I uh, participate and she's the one that actually did the uh, swab and sent it in for us. But I don't know whether Parkinsonism would be part of it or not. I can't answer that. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. I, I believe that it is. I think you do need to have a diagnosis, but I don't know that it excludes atypical. So we oh. could definitely look into that if you would like us to. I'd be interested in it if it did, but you know, I may have a different diagnosis in a couple of weeks. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We could definitely look into that, so. Okay. Let's hold on. Let me go back to that one more time. All right. Okay. So then we go back here. Um, so that's kind of how this site works. Um, another thing I did want to show is like it does go into things like non movement, just non movement. So give you a, a listing of all of those things, right? Can you believe all of those things are? On the left, non-motor symptoms, that whole concept of being an iceberg with Parkinson's, right? People see the tremor or they hear the speech. That's the tip of the iceberg. And then all of these things here are hidden underneath the water, right? Um, but you can click on each of those and it helps you get to those new things. Um, and this one here is on the living with Parkinson's. Um, and it again, it's going to just go into different topics and allow you to scroll through um, and then pick which areas you want to learn more about. 
So it's a very user-friendly site. Then your resources, this is a lot of what we have for you in the back of the room today. So we have a lot of these, if not all of these. Um, and then there are also different things that you can search for here. So let's say that I wanted to um, look up exercise, see if it works for me, right? So then this is going to tell me here, I could click on any of these seven things and learn more, whether it's from a video or a podcast or a fact sheet. Um, and it's going to give me that information that's on this site. This is a really wonderful reference for, this was done through physical therapists and exercise researchers and, and movement disorder specialists. So they did research together um, to come up with these recommendations of what your exercise regimen should look like when you have Parkinson's. Um, so this is a really wonderful resource and it was really pretty simple to find on their site there with a quick search. Um, and then this here talks about your research options. Um, they're going to put in here where the things that they are currently studying. So if you like to look at the things that are happening right now, you can learn about different centers of excellence. That's where the primary, su primary support and funding goes for research. Um, and then there again is your PDG narration. Um, so it's very a very comprehensive site. Um, the last thing on here um, is how you can donate to them. Um, and then you can also do fundraising individually or volunteering. Those are the main three things that I think are pretty important um, from the Parkinson's Foundation. All right. Okay, now the trick is, can I get back out of here? All right. So let's go. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. I was too impatient. Okay, so um, I don't know how many of you, I really wanted to share this with you guys, this fact. So just recently, within the month of January, um, this new information was, was published. Previously, the number was 65,000. So 65,000 people in the U.S. were diagnosed with Parkinson's in every year, right? So for many, many years, they said 65,000 new people will be diagnosed. Then in 2023, they said, wrong, it's going up to 90,000. So that is an astronomical amount of individuals that are living with this disease. And that's just what they're saying that we are seeing with an actual diagnosis. You know, just like Jim mentioned, like he feels that he had Parkinson's for many years before he actually received that diagnosis. So the point of telling you this is to encourage you guys to, you know, talk to your friends or family. If you, if you are worried or you think that maybe they might have something that is, is challenging for them, encourage them to talk with their doctor um, because we all know that the earlier that we get diagnosed, the sooner we can start exercising, maybe taking medication and getting support. And the sooner we do that, the better the quality of life that we have, right? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, any questions about the Parkinson's Foundation? All right. And I did try to look up um, the PD generation study um, to see if it includes atypical um, Parkinson, Parkinson's. Um, and the language they use is just Parkinson's disease, but they do have an email contact. So we can reach out um, or reach out to Dr. Lyons with KU and um, get some clarification. So that's a good question. Um, the next resource that we wanted to share is one um, I believe, you know, most people are familiar with, um, but that is the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Uh, Michael J. Fox, as most of you know, um, is a famous Canadian American actor. Um, he was actually diagnosed at the age of 29, so a very early age to um, receive a diagnosis. Um, and he actually, there recently was a documentary that came out um, that, yeah, we're hoping to see before too long, but I think he talks about, you know, that initial struggle and, um, you know, not wanting to accept, accept the diagnosis, um, which is something very common with getting a diagnosis. Um, but 
as time went on, he's really, you know, poured himself into um, the research side of Parkinson's and, um, you know, looking for a cure through research. Um, so we can go to their website. Um, and similar to the Parkinson's Foundation, they have a lot of different partners um, that, you know, similar to this meeting, focus on a topic related to Parkinson's, and they have some really great speakers that they um, get to join for that, of the why they're here. Um, so, you know, just talking about the foundation and what they do in terms of research, um, and then understanding Parkinson's, so that education piece. Um, and they kind of break it down, you know, they have the newly diagnosed um, and, you know, mental health, exercise, just different aspects. Um, and then they have here where they have their um, oops, webinars, podcasts, um, recommendations for books and resources, um, you know, straight from patients, um, they call it real talk from patients. Um, and then they do have a partner um, opportunity where um, they call it the Parkinson's Buddy Network. So that's connecting people with Parkinson's. Um, typically, you know, someone earlier on or newly diagnosed with someone who's been living with Parkinson's and has that experience and um, information to share. Um, and then information for researchers. Um, and then that take action piece. So how you can get involved. Um, you know, again, that philanthropy or fundraising component, um, but other ways to be involved in terms of research and supporting their cause. Um, and we've had, I think, two of our recent speakers for Empowered Live have been Michael J. Fox ambassadors. Is that their term? <laughs> major fundraisers, yeah, fundraisers <laughs> ambassadors. So um, there's a big network of, you know, celebrities and other people, athletes that, um, you know, do a lot of big um, campaigning and fundraising for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. All right, see if I can be as smooth as Michelle. Have to get back to it. <laughs> so just click that one from the top here. And then, yeah, perfect. Okay. Do I need to go to present or? Uh, no, you just okay. advance and you're good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is just kind of breaking down what I went through on their website. And here we go. Yeah. All right. And then the Davis Finney Foundation. Um, so Dave, does anybody recognize that name? Yeah. So Davis Finney found, oh yeah, thanks. Davis Finney was a professional cyclist. Um, he won a which a bronze medal? Yes, a bronze medal in um, the Olympics. And he also, um, he was just a very, very strong competitive cyclist for many years. Um, his wife also was a professional cyclist. Um, and then of interest, I think, is that their son was a professional cyclist um, as well. So until he had a really bad bike wreck and then he focused on art. So um, Davis Finney Foundation, I, I really like to think about the Davis Finney Foundation and the Parkinson's Foundation really working a lot on that functional living. A lot of like what we do here um, it, at Metal Arc is how to incorporate things into your daily life to make a difference. Um, and Michael J. Fox, I think, is also kind of adding to that component of theirs more. They're taking a lot of the research that they've been doing and starting to put it in more practical, functional things. But we really often think of the Michael J. Fox Foundation as that spearhead for research. Um, so I'm going to go to the next slide really quick here and just kind of give you a brief overview, and then we'll go back into the site. Um, so again, they're going to give us um, the Dana B talking about their different events. Um, they have a, a program that they, especially before COVID, they would travel to big cities um, and do what's called Every Victory Counts. And Davis would start off the presentation and then they would bring in different specialists, researchers or therapists um, to help you with um, some very functional living skills. And then they have, as Bridget explained in the di different descriptions, lots of different resources. Um, and they have the ambassadors. Um, so each state typically has two ambassadors 
And they will go around and travel throughout the state to do presentations um, or do them through Zoom. And then also just if people need a little more connection, um, then people with Parkinson's or care partners can reach out to those ambassadors. Um, we did, did have an ambassador many years ago um, that her daughter lived here in Manhattan. She was actually from Florida. Um, but Edie came and spoke to us. So she's been an ambassador for many years. Um, and then, of course, they are doing some research as well. Um, and in fact, maybe some of you guys remember um, that those when Zah, Dr. Zah was here in October, I believe, um, his research um, through K-State Nutrition um, was actually funded by the Davis Finney Foundation. So that makes them an exceptional organization, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look at their site. The very first thing is webinar. They have any of their upcoming webinars listed, um, but they do have their past ones. So it's really great to go back and find exactly what you want to see. You can see they don't have any upcoming ones, but you can go and watch any of their old ones. You just click on it and it'll take you directly to that um, to that site. Um, you can see they do a, a variety of different social events too. Sorry, our computer's going really slow. Um, so for example, they have what's called a care partner meetup. So Davis's wife, Connie, um, once a month, will have a live discussion with other care partners. Um, so that's something that you could do. And then they also do um, some a series for individuals that are in more of what we would look at as health disparities, um, whether that's based off of gender or preferences or age. So there's a lot of different programming for that as well. Their events um, are typically bro broken down into their educational events and fundraising events. Um, so as Bridget was talking about kind of that extreme sport that the Michael J. Fox Foundation folks often do, um, that's a lot of what their fundraising efforts are as well. Lots of obvious bike rides, races to be their events. Um, and then these are their past events. Um, so different types of whether it's a podcast, webinar, whatever. Um, and then their resources, um, we do have on the manual. Um, so we have one copy of that. So please don't take that with you. Um, you can, however, and it is a really great resource, how um, easy to use it is. Um, so you can click here um, to order your manual. And they, if you want to do that here, you can click and put your information in, then they will send you the hard copy. Um, or you can do a download. So you can download it to your computer or your Kindle or whatever that is and look at it that way. Um, I also did just, this is the first time I noticed this today is a care partners journal or book. I don't know what it is exactly, um, but I did register for us to receive one of those. So um, if you would like to have one of those yourself, you can definitely go on that site and request to that. Um, they are free, yes. Um, at least I should say, since it's a wait list, I couldn't 100% guarantee it, but they, they used to be free. Um, everything was a used to be, right? Before COVID, before inflation, all of those. Um, and then you've got your connect interested in looking for an ambassador. Um, so this is Edie. She's the one who came to visit us. Um, but if you wanted to reach out to an ambassador and just talk with them about, you know, what have you been doing to live your healthy lifestyle and live the way of the Davis Finney Foundation, um, you could definitely, definitely on the Davis Finney Foundation. All right, let's move on. It's just kind of slow going back here. I apologize. And then I'm going to let Bridget talk about the next one, um, which is the Brian Grant. All right. Um, I'll get started while our um, computer is trying to catch up. But for those of you here in person, um, if you want to follow along in your resource guide, you can do that um, with the Brian Grant Foundation. Um, so he was a um, basketball player in the NBA and um, was diagnosed, diagnosed, excuse me, at age 36. So also um, at a very young age for the young onset. Um, and he, you know, again, um, kind of, you know, theme with our um, foundations here, you know, launched um, his foundation to encourage people to fulfilling lives. Um, let's see. 
So again, Debbie's have broken down the sections and you'll see, you know, there's kind of a general um, pattern to these um, foundation websites. So they have the Parkinson's 101 is where they share, um, you know, an overview of Parkinson's and information about exercise and nutrition and resources. And um, again, you know, their focus is really on um, promoting exercise and a healthy lifestyle. Um, so then the next section is on that health, healthy living. So even more um, specific um, examples of exercise and nutrition um, and resources in those areas. Um, their section for the donations um, and fundraising is a getting involved section. And then they have um, events in the form of both virtual and in-person meetings. Um, and then also just there about has some more background um, about the foundation um, and then um, press releases and things um, they used to promote. Back to, all right, so we'll take a quick look at the site. <laughs> all right, so um, up at the front, um, and then events. Um, and so here you can see, um, you know, whether it's a Zoom or in person here to register as well. We do have a couple of the resources from the Brian Grant Foundation um, on here, uh, or printed out back here for you too. So, you want me to just do another one? Yeah. All right, and one you should all be very familiar with. Um, we have um, information about our own Parkinson's program. Um, so you can access that through Meadowlark's main website. Um, so that's just meadowlark.org. And then if you go to the community services tab at the top, um, there is a list of different um, community outreach or community service um, services that are available at Meadowlark. Um, so, you know, a lot of these um, would be relevant um, for participants in our program. Um, we also have information about the fitness services, um, the memory program, which I know a lot of people um, participate in our classes for that program as well. Um, and you're all welcome to um, do that. Um, of course, the Parkinson's program and then um, home health and um, rehab and therapy information, those tend to be things that um, might be a valuable resource or something to participate in um, at some point um, in the future if you haven't already. Um, so if you go to our Parkinson's program, um, there's just some background information about the program and then information about Parkinson's. Um, and then there's an option, um, I imagine all of you are on our mailing list, but if you're not, you can get added to it that way. And that just sends us an email and we can reach out and get someone added. And it goes over our schedule of um, the different classes and groups. And then our lovely contact information there. <laughs> I think my picture is about seven years old, so. <laughs> um, all right, and then um, we also have a section titled, I have Parkinson's, um, Don Rasmussen, um, a former member of the program who many of you know, um, he created a document um, that we always hand out to people that we're meeting with for the first time. It has um, information about Parkinson's and then just his experience and what was helpful for him. Um, in terms of living well with Parkinson's, um, which as you know, you know, focuses a lot on exercise and how powerful that is. Um, so we also have a presentation from him along with the option to download um, that pamphlet. Um, and then again, another way to um, get on the mailing list, um, you just fill out a form. And if you click that button I showed previously, this will take you to that, but um, just a little bit of demographic information to get you on the list. Anything I'm missing? Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, just the Meadowlark page in general, you know, if you're here for class and then you want to come down to the restaurant at Prairie Star, there's a menu. And so just other information about Meadowlark in general. Oh, the donations. 
Sorry. Oh, oh no, you're fine. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I forgot to share um, our, you know, philanthropy or fundraising um, portion of the Meadowlark site. Um, there's a button on the main page um, that says donate now, I believe. Um, so that's for Meadowlark in general. Um, there's information about the Meadowlark Foundation and different ways to give. Um, you can specify a donation to the Parkinson's program um, through that donate button. So you would just, um, you know, indicate how much you'd like to give and then designate the Parkinson's Foundation. <laughs> and of course, we have information about, you know, Speedy PD and our other fundraising and awareness events. Thank you. Okay, we will go quickly through this next section. And so the next one is on some YouTube videos. Um, the Parkinson's Foundation has a, an amazing side presentation recording. They have exercise every Monday. They have Mindfulness Monday. So it's maybe a, a meditation care type of opportunity that they'll lead you in. Um, then every Wednesday, they have Wellness Wednesday. Um, that's more of an educational opportunity recording. And then on Fridays, they have Fitness Fridays. Um, so those are all listed there. You can see each of the, there's information on the PD generation. So if you want more information um, on that, so you can go and look at that. You can see all of their um, things in Spanish, Parkinson's 101. And then these are those three that I was telling you about. So let's say just click on view full playlist. And then it's going to give me all of the different Friday fitness exercise classes that they have. Um, and I can choose whatever one I might want. So if I can't make it to a class or if I want to exercise on the days that Metal Every day Metal Arc has a class. Um, so, sorry, didn't mean to click actually go there. Um, but so they do just, um, just so you can see that. So if you click on it, please don't worry that you're in the wrong thing if they start talking, you'll actually get to the exercise. Okay, um, so there's, that is that opportunity, but that's just, as you can see, it's just a very user-friendly, easy way to, um, to get in and see the Parkinson site. Show you really quickly our Meadowlark YouTube site. It's not quite as fancy as the Parkinson's Foundation, but it is there. All right, let's go, buddy. Yes. So um, you would just go to Meadowlark. Um, you could do, so right here, you can see it says at Metal Art Hills, M Hills on your search. Oops, let me move that out of the way so you can see that. Um, so I think if you just search here, Metal Art Hills, and you can put Manhattan or 66502, it should take you to that site as well. I think there's also a button on Metal Art's on page. Okay. Too. Okay. So she said also on the Metal Art Hills website, the metalart.org, there's a button to take you to the YouTube site also. Um, so on this one, um, we do have um, some exercise opportunities. I'm trying to remember now. I did this a little bit ago. Now I got to remember where I found it. Um, I think you just kind of have to scroll through um, to, to try to find the exercise. I feel like I found a way earlier to find it easier, but now it's not coming to me. So we have some exercise in here. There's metal arc exercise. Um, and then there's also some, and in your guide also, it should list out all the different ones that you can find on the Metal Arc site. Um, and then there's also what's called memory engagement opportunity for wellness. Um, they're really cheesy. I, that was my first experience at doing um, recordings. It was all, of course, during COVID, but um, if you need a good laugh, I'm sure there's some really funny things in there. Um, and then we also have um, <clears throat> all of you who need to practice everyone. Um, let me show you what we've got here. To start out, we've got right foot down one, left foot two, forward. Okay, so you can see you don't have any excuse to not do your voice exercises. You can hop on with these awesome SLPs and they, they were my students at the time. Um, and then this was part of their, um, what they had to do as their practicum site with me was to, their job was a, a video for voice exercises. So um, there is how you can do your voice exercises without any questions. All right, let me switch this out here. And okay, so that is everything that we have to share um, virtually here. 
And I would just love it to see if anybody has other things um, that you guys would like to share with us. Are there websites? Are there YouTube channels? Are there podcasts? Are there places throughout um, the internet or other friends or family that you've learned things from? Um, and then one other um, resource guide that we have, um, which you guys could go ahead and pass that out now. I think they are on the back table. Um, it's a community resource guide that Bridget put together. Um, so it has things like, where can you go to exercise? You know, where do you, wh where's the place that you can go when it's two degrees and you still need to get your walk in? Um, where can you go if you need help getting meals and you know what what services are there here in the Manhattan area to help you get those meals. Um, how do you reach out to find a movement disorder specialist we have those places listed as well. Um, anything else I'm missing therapy like counseling therapy. Yeah, I think um, I just I do have to give credit to um, our first participants of our I can with PD class because we got a lot of feedback from that um, that group. So it wasn't a solo effort making the community <laughs> research guide. And we'll send out all of the handouts that we have to you guys as well. Um, it'll probably be next week, but we'll get it out to you. So what do you guys want to share? Anybody online in Hayes, here in person? Uh, if you like to look at research and different things that are happening, there's a website that's called uh, parkinsonsnewstoday.com. And they talk about all different kinds of um, studies and different things that people are working on that relate Okay, Parkins is it Parkinson with an N, just an N or S in it? Uh, let me look. And then it was it news. Has an S. Parkinson's news today. Today, okay, perfect. Thank you. I know you guys have other things that you lean on, look to. What are those? Manhattan mm -hmm. uh, Country Club, do they have an entry fee? Yes. Okay. Um, the Manhattan City Pools, I know you can pay um, as you go, or there's like a summer membership you can get where you pay a lump sum and then can use it um, at any pool during the summer while they're open. Um, the Country Club um, is a monthly membership fee. Um, I don't know if they have summer only memberships for the pool or not, um, but um, is a monthly fee for that as well. And then I, does it list on there too the, um, oh, what is that? The Sheridan Four Points? Oh, I don't think they have that on there now. Um, I, I know. They have a pool, but I don't know if they still have that open to the public. Um, it used to be something that they would sell memberships or hunches or something, but I'm not positive that that's still one. I just just thought of that. So last time I checked with them a few years ago, they weren't doing it anymore. They were not. OK, yeah. so I think then the only indoor pool is at Genesis. Is that correct? Or Wamigo. Yes. Yeah, so Wamigo has an indoor pool and then Genesis. Yes, Don. Oh, yes, yes, Junction City. Yes, thank you, yes. So Junction City also has an indoor pool and exercise classes too, so. Any other resources? You guys are just gonna take from us and give us nothing back today? <laughs> yes. Um, well, a question I have for the group. So um, something we hear from um, people that we meet with and that we you know, experience as well is it's kind of overwhelming sometimes all of the information and resources that are out there. So does anyone have any um, advice or what's been helpful for you in kind of 
not being so overwhelmed with all the information, but you know, finding practical ways to incorporate things where it's helpful and not stressful and overwhelming? It's a great question. If you find something that you really like, you can you print, I print it out sometimes and then have a little notebook that I can put pages in. And then if I want to look at one specific thing that I found that like I keep all my exercises that I've been given by the physical therapists and everything in this notebook so I can go back to them and look at them and review. Excellent, excellent. Virginia, did you have something too? When you first get diagnosed, you get told you need to go to exercise and speech therapy, and you may need to do this and this and this, and you need to change what you eat, and you need to take your medicine on time, and there are a lot of changes. And to be honest, nobody can do all of those at once. It's not possible. So what you need to do is sit and prioritize and say, for the next two weeks, I'm going to work on this change. And then you work on the next change. And then you work on the next change. Because if you try to change it all at once, it's not possible. There's just too much. Yeah, that's excellent. And then you get overwhelmed and burned out and you feel defeated and you quit everything, right? Yeah. Excellent point. No, you come back to middle art with <laughs> this and, and show up on what is today? Thursday. Yes, yeah. I love it. And show up here and raise your hand and there you are. I love it. I love it. That's great. That's great, John. Yes, and that is something, um, you know, too, that, that Bridget and I really want to stress to you all is that we do the free consultation. So, you know, we will sit down with you and, and just one, obviously get to know you a little bit more and then talk with you about the things that are going well, the things that you're struggling with, um, and then help you make recommendations and help you prioritize, just like Virginia said, so that you don't get so overwhelmed. Um, the key then is trying to get you to come back, like John said, right? If you know, we say, all right, we'll help you get into physical therapy. Then you get your physical therapy and then you fall off the radar, right? We want to make sure that you stay in that loop with us and, you know, get transitioned into what comes next. So you do your physical therapy, then you start your, your boxing classes, right? Don't, then you do your speech therapy, then you do your voice classes. So we really want you to stay in that continuum um, and just because we meet with you once doesn't mean we can't meet with you again. We want to maintain that contact. That's how we're going to be able to provide you the most support. Okay, so take advantage of us. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Yes, Larry. Just a quick comment. This is the first time I've been to one of these things. And it is wonderful to hear folks who've been living with Parkinson's for 20 years. My warranty is going to wear out long before that. <laughs> so thank you for giving me the inspiration of folks who lived with this for a long time. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. You're here. Yes. I love the warranty comment. <laughs> For people who are newly diagnosed, a few years ago, they came out and said, a person with Parkinson's has the same life expectancy as a person without Parkinson's. The only difference is the quality of that life. And that's what this program does. It helps you maintain the quality of life because you're still gonna live just as long. You're not going to die early because of Parkinson's. And speaking of the newly diagnosed, um, we do have folders um, at the back table again. So when we look at those resources later, um, those that newly diagnosed folder from the Parkinson's Foundation has a little bit more information in there too. So feel free to take that um, as well. So, okay. Um, All right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Mike. 
Can anybody listen but uh, to your deal here a couple nights ago with Dr. Pawa and Dr. Lyon, and he made the comment in there that uh, you will not die from Parkinson's. You're going to die most likely from a fall, uh, that type of thing, because you're not doing your exercises and that type of thing. So uh, I thought that was rather interesting. Yeah, yeah. Complications from it is often the thing that happens, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's a great point. Um, I did include in the email um, earlier, I think it was in this week's email, about that series from the KU Parkinson's Center. Um, so I believe it's monthly or every other week. I don't recall off the top of my head, but I'll try to include that information again because it, it, I've heard multiple people say that they watched it and it was a really good presentation. Um, each presentation will target a different topic. So um, listening to Dr. Pawa and Dr. Isaacson is always very, very wonderful. You learn a lot. So, all right. I'm going to let our folks in Hayes go. Um, if you guys would like, you're welcome to. Um, I think I need to unfortunately let Bridget share something um, and then um, we'll, we'll finish our introductions if I don't cry. So, hey, thank you. Um, yes, Jackie, thank you. And thank you all you Hayes folks. I'm gonna stop our recording.